you've been around this franchise your entire life. Yes. What's wrong right now? Like, how do they how do they get it back to a spot where they're competing? Even just going back to like the Lovey Smith days, like to that level where they were at least competitive every year. It takes the guys that are basically running the show, the two new guys. They got they have to be on the same page. And I know we used to hear collaborate all the time in the last regime. That has to be the case. And it's hard though, Hogue. It's hard because we got two guys that are getting their first crack at their respective positions. It's it, we don't know. There's a lot of question marks, and that's why with this, when I looked at the last regime and I looked at, you know, when Matt came in, right? I was like, I was super excited. I was gung ho. Twitter followers really showed me that by going back and digging up all my old tweets. I get that. I understand that. <laughs> so this time around, I'm taking a different approach. Well, I think it's everybody's kind of got that approach. You like, have wait to. Wait and see. You got to prove it. You, you have to prove it. And, and we're going to see by the numbers and, and the results on the football field. Um, Matt Eberflew sitting down with him. He's he, A lot of people say he doesn't have that wow factor. But you, you can tell that he's passionate about the game of football. Um, his conversation with me when I got a chance to sit down with him was like all this stuff that I'm doing right now, it's for the, the job and I understand that. And he pointed backwards, he's like, I can't wait to get back out onto those fields. That's where, that's what I love to do. And by watching some of the videos, oh, that's, he, he's a different person on the football field. So I want to see how that translates over into wins, into how they try to figure out guys that fit what they're trying to do in their system. And also now, when you think of his defense in mind, his defense that he wants to run with the players that he has that are on the roster right now, how does he kind of maneuver that and change that around to go, okay, it's not like, oh, you got to fit into what I'm doing. He's, he's definitely going to have to maneuver and change some things with the, the personnel that he has as of right now. All right. If you're Ryan Poles, I can't ever talk to you without asking you a running back question. You got David Montgomery going in the last year of his rookie deal. Oof. I like David Montgomery. I love a lot. him to death, but you're not paying running backs these days, right? You just so how do you handle that? You just let them finish this thing out, see what you can get out of them this year. I mean, that's probably I. I wouldn't do that. I mean, in my heart, the dude's a heart and soul. Like, especially on the offensive side, when you were look, trying to find things to like hold on to that were that were good all season long, he was one of those dudes. And Adam, you know when you turn on the film. The dude is a fighter. He is a baller, but you're not paying running. Running backs aren't getting paid like that. And when you have other needs that you have to address, I find it hard that they're going to say, yeah, let's give this guy a big time deal, especially what they saw out of Khalil Herbert as well. In this league, you can find guys later in rounds. Not, I'm saying this on your, saying this, David Montgomery is my guy. I don't want him to leave. But the fact is, I don't see this regime paying a running back a lot of money when they feel like they have other stuff that they have to address. Yeah, and I think that's probably how you have to play it out if you're a new GM coming to a, you have to. a new place. You have to. So. Just, but does this open up eyes for other guys with this new Iberflu's talking about, you know, everybody, I'm seeing everybody on the same lens. Are they thinking that same way about uh, guys like Allen Robinson? Like, how do, how do they feel about some of these guys that – we were all talking about before the season's over saying they're not going to be here next year is that a possibility yeah. i'm i'm just saying well i think one one guy that you could address that sends a positive message to the rest of the locker room is roquan smith uh, definitely like right away like just take He's, care of that as early as possible you, I, extend him and that's going to send a message that to. like hey those those people who have earned and and by the way i have heard that there started to be a little bit of a divide in the locker room last year, last year and this is not at all very surprising concerning no. how things went, but you had a group of veterans, a lot of guys who were on one year, the last year of their contracts that uh, the way I was told, like basically checked out. And then you had a bunch of young guys like Roquan Smith, Jalen Johnson, the David Montgomery's they, they that were still in there working their ass off they, every single day. They couldn't let that happen. So the, in, in some ways, and those guys in that locker room, you know this, being a former player, those guys know who was checking yeah. out and who wasn't. So if, if you want to send a message by rewarding the guys that were still there battling all the way to the end, I think that that would, that would be a good thing to do if you're Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus. Yeah, just talked to um, Dick Buckus today and just asked him about the way that Roquan plays. <laughs> and he, he couldn't have said 
more greater things about the young man and how he plays and loves his heart, the way that he, he upholds that linebacker position that is so storied in the Bears franchise, man, in the history. Man, I there's, there's not a lot of dudes out there. The fact that he got snubbed for the Pro Bowl is just beyond me because bright spots, man. Him, Jalen Johnson, that's the future. And also, too, yo, yo, does this new regime coming in, does it does it energize a guy like Eddie Jackson? That's another question that I want to know. Is are the, With Eberflus and the way that he is on the defensive side, does he find a way to get the best out of him? Because man, a couple, two years ago, man, three, three years ago, we were talking about, holy cow, what could be of Eddie Jackson. Now there's just a lot of question marks of, well, where is that guy? I want to know if that brings something out of him as well because we all know he's a good football player. Just haven't seen the best out of him, especially not last season.